one of the most powerful NVIDIA RTX GPUs should be releasing next month. We've even seen the box. Let's talk about which one it is, what are the changes that are going to be made in order to make it better, and if you should even care about it, i.e. is it going to be too expensive and completely out of stock. So let's get started. And if you're building your PC, remember to check out today's sponsor. It's going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. They're running a special 35% off until the end of the year where you're going to get 35% off a Windows 10 Pro CD key if you use my code CC20. So remember to use that and it's also going to work on Windows 11. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. They say every time you do, Nvidia produces one more GPU, giving you a slightly better chance at actually getting it whenever it comes out. So the topic of today is gonna be this ultra powerful GPU. Recently, we've seen two fairly major sort of pieces of evidence showing that it's indeed going to be coming, and I'm also going to tell you guys when it's coming. So, the first thing that we saw is an actual box that was leaked. This was going to be an Asus Tough, and this is going to be for the 3090 Ti. Now, it doesn't really seem like NVIDIA is very keen on producing any Titan-level GPUs, but if they did, the 3090 Ti certainly is extremely capable, and it's probably going to be a very good hybrid card for those that like to game but also use their GPU with content creation. Now one note to keep in mind for those that like the previous generation Titan cards, sometimes there are differences in the drivers that may make a difference in certain applications so it not being called the Titan GPU isn't really in name only. If it doesn't have those special optimizations it may not work on certain workstation class applications that may need specific optimization so that's definitely a little great area but otherwise extremely powerful GPU. So that first indication of a retail box would tell us that the GPU is indeed very very close. Now it's hard to tell 100% if that is actually the retail box. I mean as far as you can tell from the picture it looks like it is but it could always be faked information. That's why there's a second bit of evidence if you will for the release of the 3090 Ti and this one is going to come thanks to MSI. We've seen some evidence of their supreme X um, GPU that's going to be one of their highest end SKUs for the GPUs that they make for the 3090 Ti. So this along with the Asus GPU box looks like it's definitely going to be happening. Now the question is when is this going to release? As far as everything that we've seen that suggests a possible release date, most likely it should be around January 27th of 2022. So that's certainly right around a month from now, very very close to release. And if I were to guess I would think that Nvidia is probably going to announce this at CES 2022 which is going to be coming up in uh, you know right at the beginning of January. So 3090 Ti. Let's talk about the actual GPU. With some history, let's talk about the 3090. When this first was announced and it was close to the release date, keep in mind this was before the shortage happened and before the shortage really became such a major thing. People weren't really all that into the 3090 Ti. Sure, it was the most powerful GPU at that time, but a price tag of $1499, Founders Edition, really threw some people off and they weren't very happy with the performance to the dollar proposition. Remember, keeping in mind this is before uh, they were actually released and before the shortage that we're experiencing now. At the time, the RTX 3080 at $699 seemed to pretty much provide most, if not all, of the performance of the 3090 at less than half the price. So people really weren't too keen on the 3090 probably didn't think it was going to sell that well, or perhaps NVIDIA was only going to make a small amount of them due to the high price. Now, it's actually released and we know history, so we know what happened since then. Most of the time, a 1499-3090 in today's viewpoint is going to be an absolute bargain if you can actually buy it at that price. Look how our perspective changed on this ultra expensive GPU. This is going to be because of all of the cryptocurrency mining, all of the shortages for gamers, all of the issues that we've had in the world during the last two years. 1499 is still very expensive, but people would consider that a great price if you get your hands on a 3090 for that because 
on the secondhand market, they can sell from anywhere from $3,000 to $4,000, depending exactly when you buy it and which model. And even MSRP of third-party AIB 3090s are well over $2,000 for the most part, aside from a few like EVGA, which generally is still going to hover around $1,900 or something like that. So the 3090 went from being a GPU that nobody really liked because of price to performance, to being one that actually a lot of people ended up buying because it was generally some of the only GPUs available during our drought just because of the more expensive price. And even after a while, it be even became a GPU that was hard to find. Not as hard as the 3070 or 3080. Those still remain to be sort of the sweet spot, not only for gamers, but cryptocurrency miners that like to buy them in bulk. So really the 3090 changed from being a GPU that was going to be very, very niche. Not too many people were going to buy it to one that pretty much became widely available. So many people have 3090s that never would have imagined they're paying that much for a GPU. I mean, objectively, it is pretty much the best GPU if you factor out really the, the high price that they're going for. 24 gigabytes of very fast VRAM. It's more than enough overhead for any game you're ever going to play. You can even argue 12 gigabytes is pretty much all you need for the next few years. Of course, for cryptocurrency miners, it's very fast VRAM. It's one of the highest performing GPUs for that particular type of you know computer activity, if you will. So 3090, definitely a great gaming GPU. Now, 3080 Ti and 3080, you can make an argument there's still a better bank for your buck, but on the second-hand market, even 3080s have gotten very close to the price of certain 3090s. So at that point, many people ask themselves, are you really going to pay $1,800 to $2,000 for an RTX 3080 when you can basically get a 3090 for that same price? 3080 definitely has much more of a markup in terms of its second-hand resale value from your friendly neighborhood scalper. So... What does this mean for the 3090 Ti? Normally, we would balk at the price. It's probably going to be a lot more than the $1499 Founders Edition. Maybe the MSRP, even though that's really an arbitrary number, maybe $1799, maybe $1999. Who knows, but you can expect AIB GPUs to be well into the 2000s range. And depending how good this GPU actually is, like with its hash rate, we know gaming's going to be good. It's going to be probably a little better than a 3090. Nothing to really justify such a massive price increase if it does have one but where people are going to look to buy these if crypto is still profitable is really going to be cryptocurrency mining as this is probably going to be a non-LHR GPU if it maintains that same moniker from the current 3090 which is basically the only NVIDIA GPU that never get LHR distinction meaning light hash rate meaning it's not going to be limited in terms of its mining capabilities meaning a lot of miners will buy it if the hash rate is good enough and even if the price is a bit high, these are people already you know, willing to pay secondhand high prices because these GPUs for them have a return on investment, while for a gamer, it really doesn't make any sense at all. Now, the 3090 Ti will have more CUDA cores. It's also going to have a higher TDP than the current 3090. Some people speculate as high as 450 watts, which is certainly pretty high. I mean, you can have some 3090s like a, a Kingpin or an EVGA 4013 or an Asus Strix, some of those can already get pretty close or more to 500 watts, but to have a base TDP of 450, meaning that maybe some 3090 Ti's will get well past 500 watts, that's going to create certainly a lot of problems with, you know, you're going to need a very, very high quality power supply, you're definitely going to need really great cooling for your PC, and that's where we get into a part where the 3090 Ti may have some advantages over the 3090. One of the biggest drawbacks of the 3090 is sort of the, the thermal pads and the overheating VRAM temperatures. Now, certain games, certainly like very high ray traced games and, you know, 4K or even people that tried 8K, it will definitely start to warm up that VRAM a considerable amount, as will things like video rendering. If you're doing 6K or 8K video rendering, we'll certainly use that VRAM and start to warm it up, but nothing quite gets it hot and toasty like cryptocurrency 
transparency mining. That's why if you check on YouTube, a lot of videos for people that have actually done thermal pads and done upgrades to their 3090s have been because of cryptocurrency mining. 3090 and even the 3080 because of their very hot running GDDR6X VRAM certainly gives a lot of people problems with thermal throttling. And one thing that the 3090 Ti will have as an advantage to the existing 3090, it's going to have a different layout for its VRAM. It's going to be just on one side as opposed to also being on the back of the GPU as it currently is. So we're going to see if this is going to help at all with thermals, if they're going to redesign some of the PCB. We're going to see if out of the box that 3090 Ti is still going to overheat the memory a considerable amount. Certainly you're going to be seeing tests as they are released. That's going to be one of the main things that people want to see if it's being you know, redesigned from the existing 3090. That's something coming up as well, even for early adopters. It's going to be a little bit tricky getting the 3090 Ti, an expensive one right now, when a new GPU may be released. That's going to be a generational performance leap by the end of the year. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about the 3090 Ti. Is it something that even pops up on your radar, or are you going to continue to wait for better pricing on the current RTX 3000 series, or perhaps even the 4000, see if they're going to be any better, any more available than we've seen thus far. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.